Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I am so excited to have my very dear friends on here today, Steve and Sandra Cook. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and just want to talk, um, I want you guys to all get to know Steve and Sandra if you don't already and know the people that they are. They're some of the most amazing they're two of the most amazing people that I've ever met and have the privilege of knowing and just the nicest people. And just every time I talk to them, I feel uplifted and inspired at the end of the conversation. They're just those kind of people. And they, um, we got together uh, with a couple of other people, I want to say towards the end of August or last September, I can't even remember the exact date and decided to go ahead and launch Scott Week. And so we're three people on the board of Scott Week from that group. And just wanted to talk a little bit about that because really, you know, Steve and I had been, and Sandra had been involved with Brit Week for many years and performing for Brit Week. And Steve was always, you know, kind of prodding me or just asking the question, hey, you know, what about a Scott Week? You know, uh, you know, we should do Scott Week. We should make so really. It was you're the inspiration behind Scott Week, and I don't know if people know this or realize this, but I want them to know this. So talk. Oh, a little that's bit. very kind. Yeah. So talk yeah. a little bit about that. Um, I think it just it all came from rock and roll. You know, it all came from music. We were doing these Brit Week rock and roll shows and you would walk through the audience with your bagpipes and it just set the whole tone for everything. You know, it's, it was the whole Brit, you know, Britain, England, the United Kingdom, you know, and basically that's what it was doing. It was uniting all of us. Uh, and it was wonderful. And then of course, Brit Week had a short spell, which was an opportunity for us to, you know, have a crack at Scott Week. So yeah, it was to be kind of honest, we're trying to find the hundred year old malt, you know. <laughs> so let's say it all happened because of malt and music. <laughs> I like yes. Yes. Yeah. and music. And I love that idea. We, and hopefully somebody will bring us a hundred year old malt from somewhere at some point. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You know, well, that'll be a very special celebration. Perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we have uh, our fifth year or something like that, we can break it out. So it, I want people to get to know both of you and it, it's, I think it's kind of rare for Sandra to be in front of the camera with us and so I'm so excited you could be here with us today, Sandra, and I wanted to, people to, to get to know you a little bit. So just, you want to share a little bit about, you know, where you grew up, where you come from, and a little bit about your background. Oh, I, I grew up originally in, in Germany, but um, I have lived for a long time in New Zealand as well and, and the UK. So the, the British culture of, is really part of me as well. And um, I've, I haven't lived in Germany for over 20 years now, I think. Yeah, ma yeah. Ma maybe longer. So, we yeah, we maybe call longer. her a G-Wing. Yeah. She's an English <laughs> but, um, New Zealander. Yeah, it, it's, so I am... Um, I, I feel like um, someone who's been taken out of, of the continental kind of Europe and put, uh, you know, to the little British island. And um, I, I really dearly, dearly love England. I really do. And, um, you know, and all its part. And, and I've been several times to Scotland, to Glasgow. And um, I, I worked in, in, in advertising my whole life. And um, I actually, when I worked in Munich um, many, many years ago, we had... Um, an agency network and one agency was in Munich, one in, in Glasgow and in Scotland and one was in Paris. So uh, we constantly did exchanges and visited each other and I had the best time in Scotland, I really did. And um, they were so nice, incredibly nice people and then traveling through the highlands and it was just um, fantastic. So. You know, obviously later I met Steve and we moved um, to just outside of London and, and, and I really, really dearly love England. And then from there we moved to New Zealand and um, I'm a New Zealand citizen as well. And, and then I actually realized how um, New Zealand has got so many parts that are 
so close to England, it sometimes really looks like you are in Scotland. And then you suddenly figure out these people, they even look Scottish down here. I mean, one example. <laughs> um, so, you know, so many Scots um, and Northern Brits actually ventured to New Zealand. So this is like, for example, Steve's uh, family, which is half um, Scottish and half English. And, um, you know, his dad being from Blackpool and his grandmother being, you know, originally Scottish and um, how they kind of then found each other back again in, in, in New Zealand. And, um, and for me, it just was such an incredible journey to, to get to know this type of, of culture, you know, even though the German culture, of course, is, is mixed into the British culture anyway, but from a very, very long time ago. So I kind of catched up, you know, later again and really become part of it. And maybe even more than, you know, being, being German now, um, I feel like, uh, um, uh, you know, the New Zealander with a British heart and um, living in America. And, uh, and I, you know, coming here, I, I, dearly, I dearly love the U.S. and, you know, and it's, it's people and it's diversity. I, I love Los Angeles a lot because of the diversity. You meet everyone here from everywhere. And, um, and that's what I, I'm always really excited about. And I still work in marketing, um, never change. So that's, that's pretty much me. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been quite quite a journey. I, I had to take her to the UK first to soften her up before yeah. we went down under. Yeah, I've met some amazing people over, Steve, in, including uh, the Prince of Wales. Um, he actually performed for him. Um, we went to polo games. We went to the Henley Regatta. Um, I really got to see, you know, the, the upper class part of, 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 the, of England, if you may still say that. And, um, and then the she'll be right, you know, g'day mate, um, down under. And just, it's so different, but then so lovely. And it really helped me with my own experience and you know how I've grown as well. And, um, and then Scotland somehow came back into the game again. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, there you go. I'm, so I'm bringing kind of the Saxon part into it. <laughs> we go down in history, maybe. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then, you know, all of the experience that I've had in my life, you know, having had a partner on my side who, you know, greatly guided me through that and also taught me a lot. Well, and you're such a beautiful person, but and people um, always say, you know, about you that you're not just beautiful on the appearance but on the inside as well you just have a heart of gold and you're just immensely talented in, oh, in what you. you do with your marketing you know and I know that you you're helping you've helped Scott Week quite a bit and also also Brit Week and so a lot of what people see out there in terms of the marketing that's you and you do such an amazing job and we thank you we, we're so blessed to have you with us as well. Well, thank you for having me part of, you know, Scott Week, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed as well. Yeah, I'm, oh. I'm very, I'm very lucky too because my fashion sense has improved, <laughs> uh, and you know, there's the photographs that are out there of me. Uh, you know, they're not sort of showing the worst side. The worst side, you know. So <laughs> that's no, one advantage. You always look great, both of you do, and it's always fun to be with you and be around you. And I forgot to say early on, so if you wanna find out more about Scott Week, scottweek.org is our website. Um, and if you can please like and subscribe here to our YouTube channel, and you'll see a lot of interviews um, that will be coming out in the coming weeks. We, we put these interviews out, these podcasts out on Mondays. <coughs> And um, so with, with that, I wanted to talk a little bit about, Steve, your music and what you do, because I feel like, you know, it's so inspiring. Your music is so uplifting and so inspiring. And just every time, every time we hear, um, you know, you're, we, we come listen to you live, it's truly an uplifting experience. I always talk about how your music is, is in my cars. I listen to it in the morning. It just gets me going. And I think people need, they need some inspiration and they need some uplifting um, 
whether it be music or, or art or whatever it is, we need uplifting things, especially right now. And so that's why I really wanted to have you come on and talk about your music. And, um, and I know that you're not performing live right now, but of course we'll have to keep up with you as, when you are, but you are on <laughs> Sunday evenings at 5.30 PM every Sunday. Um, yes. for a half an hour or so. Let's talk about your music and where you got started. I know we had done this once before, but for those people who didn't get to see that or listen to that, when did you first know in your life that music was going to be such a big part of what you are about? Uh, I think that was probably when I was like about 16, 17. I was looking at doing, um, I'd always played music because my dad was a musician. He was in a, in a band called Max Merritt and the Meteors, which were very well known down under. They had a smash hit called Slipping Away. And Morris, my father, he um, left the band because he got a contract with a record company called Phillips. So uh, I was always listening to dad's records. He was the first uh, English guy to work with, um, obviously from Blackpool, to work with the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra. So that music was always playing in the house. Uh, but my mum, you know, and the Scottish connections were always like, you know, get a real job. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of a tug of love between academia and um, music, you know. So long story short, I got my first break uh, in New Zealand at a festival called Nambassa, which is a huge festival. And I was very, very fortunate. It was my first contract be you know obviously lying about my age I said I was a lot older than I really was and um, to answer your question the moment I made that decision was um, when I was speaking with an African-American musician who's passed now his name was Sonny Terry he was part of a duo uh, which were called Sonny Terry and Browning McGee and uh, Sonny Terry he, he had no vision so I was kind of like his eyes for, for the day, which was amazing. So I'm sitting with him in the green room and he's got all of his harmonicas here, you know, and all down here, all these different harps and these, he's telling me all these stories about the Mississippi <laughs> and, you know, and I'm like hanging on every word thinking, oh my goodness. And then we got to talk about, you know, uh, music and how if you really want to do it properly, it needs to be your whole life. You know, you can't sort of, you know, do this sort of, you know, you're Dr. Cook and then the next moment you're, you're out touring in a rock and roll band, you know, you have to make decisions. So it was one of those, do I take the left road or the right road, you know, the red pill or the blue pill, you know? So um, obviously I took the pill for the journey and um, here that was we from are. The Matrix. Yeah, that was from the Matrix, for your, <laughs> your Matrix fans. So yeah, here we are. Um, that was the very, that was the turning point in my life and also uh, Desi Gillespie was there and he was hilarious he'd be running around all the kids going <laughs> on his finger and blowing out his cheeks and everybody would laugh so I just felt so much love with those um, original bluesmen from the United States that I just thought I want to be a part of that love for the rest of my life you know um, it was just and the feeling of the blues I was standing on the side of the stage watching Sonny Terry and he was quite frail, he was always sitting down, but the New Zealand audience went completely nuts and he stood up, you know, and he stood up and he, and he sort of blew his harmonica and I was tingling all over, you know, from top to bottom thinking, oh my God, you know, it's <laughs> so amazing. And he was singing, you know, these songs. And I just thought, this is the lifestyle that I want to live for the, for the rest of my days. So, you know, here we are still writing songs and, you know, I've even written a song called No One Owns the Blues. The Blues <laughs> Owns You, you know. <laughs> and uh, I was so surprised when I Googled that that it wasn't already used. And I wrote that song because people get so depressed. And uh, I was trying to help folks out with, you know, depression at the time, like understanding, you know. One thing I learned from, from, the, from those original guys, Sonny Terry, one thing I remember he said is, yeah, you have to know how bad, bad feels to play the blues. You know? 
you know. I certainly knew how bad bad feels, I can tell you, in those early years. Uh, you know, no money, no food. You know, when you take that journey, you, you really have to take it. You can't kind of be half pregnant, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, well, and you were, you were so right. And you're, you're such a prolific songwriter, as well as musician and singer. And I, I know, you know, from knowing other musicians, I myself play a little instrument. It's kind of quiet, but it's not my first time. Oh, you're great. I love you quiet. <laughs> but, but, but loud. I under, <laughs> it's very loud. But I understand, you know, when you, when you were drawn to the music, you know, and the music, and, and you're, you're drawn to your instruments, and you're drawn to it, to the point that you need it in your life, and you need it in such a way um, you, you have to make the music and put the music, I, I feel like it comes through, comes through your soul, whether it comes out your voice, whether it comes out an instrument that you picked up, that you're putting it through, whatever the case may be, it's a big part of you. And I know, I know it's a struggle and it's, I have a huge amount of respect for you being able to go down that road and doing that and saying, no, I'm just going to do this. I, I know people who are musicians and write music who didn't do that and they wind up, you know, doing other things or maybe they're encouraged early on, you know, by people who want the best for them. Hey, you need, you know, like your mom said, you need a real job, you know, or you need, yeah. And, and it's, but then they're very unhappy um, most of the time because it's really, music's in their soul and that's what they really want to be doing. And it seems like, you know, a lot of times the more you work doing something else, um, the, the less music you're able to do. And then I think that makes people who have music in them very sad. And so I'm really glad you went down this road because you have so much amazing talent to share with other people. And the type of music that you write um, is just for, for people who don't know or haven't listened to you before. I want you to tell them where to go to find you and to find your music in addition to your 5.30 p.m. Sunday performances. Sure, yeah. The 5.30 uh, Sunday performances are every Sunday. <clears throat> and the, I'm calling the show The Sound of Distance. And you can find that on my um, Facebook fan site. It's the one with the um, blue tick. But you can, um, a lot of people forget, you could just Google Steve Cook with an E musician and uh, information will come up. But the website is uh, www.stevecook with an E official.com. That's so, perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. And where do people, um, are people able to download your music from that site as well? Yes, they can. I've done something interesting on that site. Obviously, I've got iTunes and CD Baby and all the normal stuff. But I've noticed that with these companies, you can't download WAV files. Only, you know, MP3s. MP3s yeah, with, um, you know, the sort of like nine megabytes. So you can come to my website and you can download uh, some of the songs that are like 40 megabyte and they're full wave. So when you play them in the car or, or your headphones, you know, they sound a hell of a lot better. You know, they sound like a record from the old days because I did bother to make them analog, you know. But the time that they spend, you know, getting squashed and squashed and squashed and squashed, even Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin said some of the MP3s he listens to on iTunes, it sounds like they've changed the entire mix of the song. So this is a huge problem, especially for the younger generation, because they really have no yardstick to measure by. They only know the very small <laughs> in, the, in the little buds, you know. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, I've, I've done that before. I put records on and changed the EQ and the stereo and had a whole lot of love at number nine, and the young kids will come up, oh, Mr. Cook, can we see that band? <laughs> you know, they've never felt the music, you know, they've never felt the kick drum in their stomach. And, and when they feel that, it's kind of like a, an awakening. But they're very, you know, just, everything's inside the little earbuds these days. And, and I mean, some of them are really quite good. The technology is all there, but there's nothing better than standing in front of a pair of 18 inch speakers, you know, for the bass. Yeah. Well, you know, and I, Forgive me if I'm not saying the proper name of this song because you know when I got your when I got your um, 
your CDs. I'm kind of old school sometimes still. And I put them into my cars and, and there they are. And I rarely look at the titles, but there's one that I'm going to call thinking a little bit of wine because I'm always thinking of wine. It's a very full body um, song that I absolutely love. I'm going to call it Gravity. Oh, yeah. right. Gravity. Yes, I know that yeah. song. That's off an album called um, Radio. Yes. Yeah. I love that album. I, I love all of your stuff. I absolutely love that. I listen to that every day at least once. But I put that song on in the morning. And I just, I love the way it ramps up in the beginning. I just find it so incredibly inspiring. And you're talking about, you know, hearing all of all of the the music and all the intonation. That is such a full body song and i love that song it's a very yeah. even though the it words was, you know it was recorded uh at paramount studio the um that was you know a while ago it's, it's an analog um recording on on two inch tape so there's songs in that album also composed by a guy called dublin jones who's a songwriter i was commissioned to sing on that record and later some of, um, I signed a record company, later some of those particular songs ended up being on a double album with um, Adam Lambert, who later went on to sing for Queen. So uh, the record company that we we're all signed to at the time bundled a whole lot of those tracks with um, some of his tracks as well. And they released that under a product called the Paramount Sessions. So the song that you're referring to is from that period of time. And uh, I too like that uh, because it was all done on analog discs and two inch tapes and stuff like that. And the so beginning, I think, is the tape playing The beginning backwards. of that song is the two inch yeah. tape playing backwards. Yeah, it's pretty you know? cool. So, you know, just old school kind of <laughs> stuff, which is pretty much forgotten. But we are, I am looking to do, to do a new album. Um, you don't know yet with some... So there's a lot of fuss happening in New Zealand at the moment because it's kind of the first country where one can tour in. And um, I've been invited to go down there and, and do some performances. I'm just trying to figure out the logistics of it. But part of my return there, if it, if it does pan out, is that I am um, kind of insisting on that we do a record uh, with the original musicians that I made the album Live For The Moment with. So yeah. that's, uh, you know, that's on the cards, but as everything is with rock and roll, it can change from one day to the next. So one doesn't sort of like to sort of go into it too deeply until the money is in the bank and the contracts are signed, you know. Or well, hex it. <laughs> yeah, or hex it, yeah. <laughs> Well, it just gives us another reason to make sure we're staying tuned in with you and following you and listening to you so we can follow what happens there and you know one of our other board members Graham is from New Zealand as well and so you know maybe if you do wind up doing that he can come out and, and watch you and, and see you if you see yeah that's 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 true I was thinking that we'd, we'd love to do a show in Canterbury and in, in Christchurch uh, which we, what they call the mainland you know so there you go um, I'm, I'm from the mainland we're all from Canterbury and Southland and Otago. Otago was built by Scots, you know, and of course so was Invercargill in the deep south. Uh, so it would be wonderful to tour there and, and they want to have a combination of original material and, um, you know, songs from Page and Plant 95 and also picking up a little bit of the mantle from Led Zeppelin's last time they reformed, which was in 2007. So we just have to see how it... Um, how it pans out. But as far as Scott Wick goes, I'm going to be interviewing Mick Davis uh, as part of the Scottish Connection, which will be coming yeah. up. Yeah. And um, what, what, what script did he write? What was the movie called? He wrote um, Nine and a Half Weeks. Uh, he, he wrote scripts for a couple of Mickey Rourke movies and um, we still have to do a bit more research, but um, yeah, yeah. And he's a he's a very accomplished um, uh, um, script writer, and um, he's directing two films at the yeah, moment in directing. Scotland. Yes, he's, he's right. trying to get in, into Scotland as we speak. So I'm going to yeah. catch him 
just, just before, before he, he goes. Yeah. yeah. Should we grab it? And he's Which very he's Scottish. He's From very Glasgow, Scottish, right? yeah. He's another Glaswegian yes. chap. So, yes. so we have a lot of fun. He's a Ouija. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Certified. I, I love like, that. Um, I Ray. Like Ray. Yeah. Like Ray Weston, yeah. 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 Well, that I and, and I can't wait to see that interview. That's exciting. And I um, you know, because Davis is from the Davison clan, which is one of my clan Hatton clans. So oh. we can tell them which we're we are we are kin of some sorts. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so. Well I'll ask him about that. I'll ask him where he's from and you know. It's going to be he's he's a, a laugh a minute. He's a very smart guy as well. So it's it's gonna be a good listen. Very yeah. fun. I, I can't wait to see that interview and I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to talk about that too. So I, um, and I'm very excited to hear what you're, what are you going to do this Sunday? What's on this Sunday? Do you have it planned yet or do you just kind of wait until? Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I have mixed emotions. I was thinking about playing only music composed by African Americans. That was one thought I had, but then there's so many people that like to hear you know, some acoustic songs from, from Zep, or I could do it totally original music, or I could play songs that have influenced me, um, you know, or from, all from the blues voice, or everything <laughs> all together. Yeah, a little bit of everything, a collage. <laughs> so. A collage, I like that idea. And I like, I like it sometimes, I don't know, do you, like sometimes, once in a while, I'll know what I'm going to play ahead of time, a lot of times, I just, whatever, I feel like playing at the moment. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, that's Yeah, I'm, I'm like that. I'll, I'll have that. a set list. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. I have a set list written, <laughs> and then Sandra will say, you know, one, two, three, and then bang, I play something completely different and don't even look at the list. So, oh, oh my goodness. It's yeah. very cool. Well, is there anything else you'd like to leave us with? Um, I, and thank you so much for all of your time today. And it's just been wonderful having both of you um, here and being able to see you, Sandra. I, I love to have you. Kind of, you're always in the. You're always like backstage or or what whatever That's they fine. give you. <laughs> but I I love having you you out and thank you for doing that and and just saying hello to everyone so they can see your beautiful face and um, but having you both on and, and taking the time out of your very busy day to be here. And again, you know, Scott Week, scottweek.org and our events are April 16th through the 23rd, approximately of 2021, but we'll continue to do our interviews weekly and so excited um, for this one to go up as well as for you to have Mr. Davis on, that'll be fantastic. Is there mm -hmm. anything else you'd like to leave us with? Um, and again, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, unfortunately, it looks looks like we're having this second wave of this terrible COVID nineteen. Um, I, I saw a graph from nineteen eighteen where everyone came out to celebrate the end of the First World War, and this is exactly the same type of um, outings that we've had, um, you know, I'm thinking it's, it is a celebration because we're, we're celebrating the change. The change is finally here. It's, it's not change is going to come. The change is here. It's arrived. Um, but the, the, the sad human um, aspect of that is that everyone has gone out and um, protested. Um, and as a result of that, it's the same thing that happened during the Spanish flu. So um, to come to my point, um, you know, a lot more people, there could be another lockdown. And if there is another lockdown, sadly, uh, I just want to let people know if you're watching Netflix, you can catch me um, on Real Rob. Oh, not everyone's thinking, oh no, not that again, not watching Netflix again. Ah. But um, yeah, if you've, if you've not seen that, I played Paul McCartney's guitarist and Rob Schneider is stalking me. So it's, a, hilarious. It's, it's hilarious. And you can see that on Real Rob, it's season two, it's the latest season. And I'm in episode three, which is called Best Play Date Ever. But you'll just find it yeah. under Real Rob. Yeah. Well, if you haven't seen it. Yeah, you should watch it. It's you should hilarious. watch it. 
And what we'll do is down in down below, we'll go ahead and put descriptions, links to your sites, links to you, but we'll also, if we can't link directly to that episode, we'll put instructions of exactly how to find it down below um, in yeah. the description below. So people can find that because how fun, it is great fun. And I, thanks for reminding me about that. I forgot that you did that and it is hysterical. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really it's helped so a lot and, and I must thank everyone who was locked in who did watch it because it's given me a bump which which I needed in IMDB and um, you know because of that little bump um, you know it's looking like I might get some work in a major feature film so you know more on that later another day another day yeah well well we'll definitely have to keep up with you and um, don't forget Steve Cook, Sunday evenings, 5.30 p.m. Yes. on his Facebook fan club page. And um, we'll put the link down below so you can grab that. Meet me yeah. there. I, I always try to be there. And um, I love it. And I, I always get parties together and I put you on the speaker system in the house and we all grab a drink. Oh, and well, thank you. Thank you so much. Talk about no pressure, you know, live. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I better we, try yeah. and knock off the afternoon drinking then. <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't. It, it's fantastic. But we know we usually have, we usually have anywhere from maybe 10 to maybe 15 people over at one time there were a bunch of people in the hot tub and we put the speakers out there and we put the screen out there so they can watch so even though it looks like it's just one person myself i've i always have a watch party so <laughs> oh, that's, cool. that's nice and yes yeah, some people have actually made some personal donations so i must thank them very much for that it's really appreciated i'm just going to put that you know contribute to my savings to get the hundred year old malt scotch one day, <laughs> you know? Yes, and we can put all that down below. You can share all that with me. But thank you both, Steve and Sandra Cook, for being with us um, this week for our Scott Week podcast interview on YouTube. I don't know if that is an oxymoron, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but please don't forget to like and subscribe our page if you haven't already to see more amazing interviews like this one and to keep up with Steve Cook and what he's doing in his new projects. And just love you both so much. Likewise. Thank Likewise. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. All right. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. <laughs>